Hi, I'm Dr. Brian David Phillips and live trans and prosper. It's Wednesday, so that's pastoral question day. And today I've got a fun one. I've approached this topic on a, on a Tuesday session, but I'd like to approach it again on answering a question. Okay, and so this time, um, Edward from Costa Rica asks, Some of your videos, you talk about real or imagined gods. This seems disrespectful to those who have faith and a little off-putting to others. If the gods are imagined, how can they help us? Please explain your, this is good, silly ideas. Well, it's really not a silly idea. It's an essential idea of a belief system. Many agnostics hold this system, as well as some atheists and as some people of faith. And that is, our belief puts energy into the gods. Now, some gods are more powerful because they have more believers. Other gods are less powerful because they have fewer believers. Now, that's an interesting construct. I don't actually believe it. Uh, because I have other faith in that regard. However, I do agree and I do believe that our belief system, our faith, empowers us as it opens our channel to our deity. Now, a real deity, a real God that interacts with the world, interacts in specific and certain ways. An imagined God is actually how most of us see deity. Even those of us who are in standard religions that have been around a long time and that we're interacting with genuine deity, we're actually interacting through an imagined construct. Because we can never know the true deity. We can never know true godhood. We can only filter our experience of the divine through human perceptions and human values. That's also why the perception of deity changes over time. Even in one very narrow religious system, for instance, if we were look at, to look at the Judeo-Christian religions, or if you prefer the Abrahamic religions uh, that are descended from Abraham's faith. So the Jews, the Christians, uh, the Mormons, the Muslims, and other faiths that come from this branch. Okay, When we look at the Abrahamic religions, we can see that early on there was a certain conception of God. In the beginning there was darkness upon the void, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Skip up for it. And God said, let us make man in our own image. Let us, a pluralistic deity, create man. Now later, that pluralistic deity, which is really Yahweh, is a tribal, a tribal God. And we can see that relationship over time. We can see it change as eventually Yahweh becomes a national God. Not just a tribal god, but a nationalistic god, which is founded and uh, uniquely associated with the kingdom and the political structure. And then it starts morphing into a monotheistic god. And then we see influence of Zoroastrianism. And we start seeing how the figure of Satan begins to change. Um, originally, Satan was just a servant of God. He was the tester. He tested under God's rules, under God's orders. And later, after Zoroaster, that starts infecting the Abrahamic belief systems. We start getting per parity. And so no longer it's God with Satan. We start seeing God is good, Satan must be evil. They have to be equal, which is a really odd idea. Why would he create something that is equal to him? 
because he's God and he's inherently not good, not evil. He's just the creative force. But our conception changes. Once we hit the New Testament, we get folks who are interpreting that as saying, the Old Testament's just history. The New Testament is the new law. But then there are folks who are saying, no, the Old Testament is literally true, and we got to do that stuff too. All right? And so we start changing our value systems over time based upon cultural shifts, political expediency in some cases. Predominantly, though, it's a shift in how the human mind works and how human culture adapts to new things. And what was acceptable once is no longer acceptable today. Lot pretty much told a mob of rape would-be rapists, Here's my preteen daughters. Go to it. Just leave my buddy over here alone. That's not really acceptable behavior today. But in the Old Testament, he's laurelized as, That's a pretty awesome guy. Not in my book. I think it's a really creepy thing by our standards today. We don't sell our daughters, uh, for the most part, most people watching this video, uh, most of you would be uncomfortable with the idea of selling your daughter off for cattle to be married, or that um, people can buy and sell slaves because God said that's okay. All right, But today our values change, and as our values change, so does our interaction with the deity. The divine itself didn't change much, okay? Human history is in the thought of the true divine, the real divine. But our interaction changes and our perceptions change. There are stickers, bumper stickers on cars out there that says, God is love. You know, really, God is love. God, the guy who threw down plagues on Egypt and killed thousands of babies. That's love? I'm not so sure you know what love is. But no, God is love. Our perception has changed. Although, as some of you know from a previous video that I did on this very channel, some folks don't really know what love is and they have a hateful God. That's their perception, their interaction with the divine. I prefer interaction with the divine on a loving and accepting level. So, yes, gods can be real and imagined because our human interaction is our projection of that. Now, ideally, we interact in a positive way. And so you get a positive interaction so that that reinforces a positive projection. Work on that. I hope that's been helpful. I know for some folks it's still iffy, and that's okay. That's your understanding. Your understanding may not be my understanding. It's all right if we have different understandings of the divine. That's kind of the whole point of the Church of Universal Loving Transformation now, isn't it? your own personal experience. Please click subscribe so you know when we have new videos. Uh, comment, ask questions. If I say something that offends you, let me know. And if you have make a good point, I may even respond to it. Ask questions, ask questions. Like our videos, make comments. If you don't have questions, just say, hey, good job, or I was confused, or something else. Just, yeah, I liked that video. Okay? On Tuesdays, I do rants and sermons. Wednesdays, I answer questions, pastoral questions and other things. And Thursday's trance time. But for now, this is Dr. Brian David Phillips saying, live trance and prosper. Bye-bye.